Hey everybody, glad you can make it here today. So today's webinar are the tensor coils or more specifically the golden fire coil. So if you guys all wanted to jump into the heart space with me and set space here, I'm just gonna close my eyes and visualize within my heart of sending my light down into the earth, connecting to that crystal sun of the earth. Breathing in that loving energy right up into the heart. Connecting with source, soul, creator, bringing in that energy into the heart. And then breathing both those energies together within the heart so we are that calm of light. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Glad you guys can make it today. All right. So the golden fire coils. We'll start a little bit about talking about the coils in general and how they came to be. And of course, as um, as I began working with Slim Sperling, um, the late Slim Sperling at the time, even. Um, his tensor coils that he created, the the AccuVac, uh, uh, rather, the AccuVac was simply, it was a coil, but instead of the twisted wire, like a tensor ring, it was just a single copper wire cut to a sacred measurement, usually the sacred cubit. And then he created the coil around the center, and it then had a one-way flow of energy, was what the AccuVacs have. So the AccuVacs were, you know, they're, they're a pretty phenomenal tool. I've only made one, maybe two ever in my life. I was never really drawn to make the AccuVacs. Um, and then it was about a year after I started making the rings that um, Slim encouraged me to make the tensor coil. So it's basically an AccuVac with the twisted wire. So I believe the first one was made out of the sacred cubit, the spurling cubit. And that one, um, you know, it's just the thinner 14 gauge wire. Uh, basically, I took a wooden dowel, I drilled a hole through it, I slipped one in the wire through the dowel, and then I wrapped around it. Now, the, the AccuVac Slim actually wound in one specific direction. Um, when you're looking down the barrel of the coil. Slim wrapped his in a counter rotating style. And I'm not sure what the reason for that was, but that's just how those ones were wrapped. Um, when we created the tensor coils, it is in a clockwise motion down the barrel. Now, as soon as I made the very first one of these, um, it was pretty interesting because Slim wanted me to call it the new dimensions coil. And at the time I had no idea. I didn't follow what his, uh, his widow was doing at light life technologies and come to find out that was the name of the tensor coil that they created was the new dimensions coil. So I'm really glad that that's not what we called it. Uh, we simply called it a tensor coil, uh, to differentiate it from the AccuVac. So the tensor coil, when you create a coil with a tensor ring, with the twisted ring, cut to that sacred measurement, and then you wind it, it is creating a toroidal field, a true tube torus. So the energy flow is this way, as you would see it with the earth magnetics, but it goes both ways, and it spins in both directions. So it is a counter-rotating vortex that meets itself both in and out. So this tensor coil is does produce a true toroidal field, a true tube torus. Now we started making these and then we found the infinity a few years later and the infinity or the infinite heart, we found that these are connecting into the heart, um, into the electromagnetics of the physical heart and to our light. And so it just made sense to add the infinity onto the coil because 
Then we have our heart, which is that huge electromagnetic generator that creates that tube torus as well. And then we have the coil that is creating the tube torus. Now the infinity is connecting into the energetics of the heart. So it connects the field of the coil to the field of the heart. And so the coils, I really love the coils because it is connecting into the heart as well as the Merkaba fields, all of your Tauruses. And so the coils are aligning, balancing, and amplifying all of your torsion fields, whether it's from the heart, whether it's from the Merkaba or the Merkabas. Um, we have several torsion fields from the body and this aligns, amplifies, and strengthens. So one of the special things that we found about like the Harmony Coil, when we first started making the Harmony Coils um, out of the Balance and Harmony Ring, we were seeing, again, because the, they are working, the Harmony Ring is working with your light, just like all of the newer frequencies, they're very much working with our light. So with the Harmony Coil, and it was about this size, this is a rather large golden fire coil we'll talk about in a moment, but the Harmony Coil was about this size. And when you wore it, it basically entrained your field and bringing onto your field the things that you would normally do consciously. What I mean by that is I would always send energy to my food. I would send the energy to any of the food or the water or anything that I ingest, not only to it on the physical, but also to everything that it was connected to. So if it was a hamburger, I would send that energy to the cow um, all the way from when it was born, all the way through its life, all the way through its death, all the way through the handling, every bit of that cow. So than like a um, anything that was organic, like um, the grains and the bread. I would send that unconditional love and gratitude from the heart, your light. I would send all of that to, again, to the plant, to the field, to everybody who harvested it, the processing all the way through. So that is just something that I would consciously take the time to do with my food and anything that I would ingest. And after wearing the Harmony Coil, that basically took everything that I was doing and put that onto the field into my Taurus and it made that more of an automatic process. So then anymore, I don't do that work because it is within my field that that work happens automatically. And that's a beautiful thing that we can program our fields, whether it's your Merkaba field, your Taurus, or whatever field it is to do the work for you automatically. So that is something that just innately happens when you're wearing the coils, is that those things that you would normally do, so basically you still do the work when you first wear the coil, and then that basically entrains and programs into your field easier. So programming your field is one of the phenomenal things that the coils do. Um, so then after the Harmony Coil, we had the some of the smaller versions um, Let's see, I think the first smaller version of the coil, these little guys, was the 444 coil. And then we used the, in the 444 was the very specific measurements, 444 millimeters. It came from the 888 series, the Metatron ring. Now the 444 coil um, looks exactly like this golden fire coil. They're only about three millimeters in difference between the entire length of the wire. And then the 444 coil had the Harmony ring on it. Um, that was a phenomenal, phenomenal coil. Now that is one that when you'd wear it, and there's still a lot of people out there that are wearing that coil. Um, just did an event last weekend in New Mexico and I saw a lot of people still wearing that 444 coil. Fantastic to see. Um, so when you're wearing that, that 444 or the Golden Fire, any of these coils, the newer ones now, are basically in training your field to flow in that certain fashion, aligning all of your Tauruses with that of the heart and the Merkaba and this. As it's aligning all those and strengthening those, basically I wore my coil, my 444 coil, for about three weeks. Then I didn't need to wear it anymore 
because it entrained my fields to stay that way. Now that time frame will be different for everybody. Some people it's happened, you know, just a few days. Some people talk about wearing it for a few months and then they know that too, that everything, their fields are entrained. Now I still wear a coil to this contraption right here, but I, I love the coils. Um, my sister Brenda's never been fond of the coils. Not sure why. She's not sure why. Um, I think it has to do just, I'm not even going to guess. But anyway, most people will resonate with the coils. Now, the Golden Fire coils, when these came in, um, and they were bringing in our light more into that field around us um, because they connect into the heart where our light is, and they and that light comes out onto that field that toroidal field so the torus that's created by the the coils um i see them as you know approximately 20 feet wide um just innately that's about how wide i see them 16 to 20 feet and so when you're wearing the golden fire coil we call it also an empath filter because it is bringing that light, your light out onto that field, so it becomes more of a conscious field. And that conscious field, that is your consciousness, your soul, your light, it is acting as that filter to allow in what is beneficial to you and to transform what is not. So we call it the empath filter simply because you can still receive that information because it's phenomenal to be an empath. Um, we just get a little bit overloaded sometimes. So when you wear the golden fire coil, AKA the empath filter, it will filter out all that other stuff that you don't need to receive. Um, and of course, this is also one that for people with uh, severe hypersensitivity to electromagnetics, this is the coil that we always suggest is the golden fire coil. Now we used to sell, um, and we still have a few left at, at this very moment, but we had the larger coil, the standard golden fire coil, um, which was the very first one that we made. And then we finally started to make this smaller version. Now they're both the same potency, even though one's larger than the other. So we've discontinued that standard size version just because it's more for, you know, it's, it's more bling. Um, the mini coil, it's it's just a lot more petite. This guy, I, this is one of the buzziest tools that that we create for me anyway, that I can barely hold on to these smaller coils for very long just because they are so buzzy. Um, so golden fire coil. This guy is, for those of us who still want the big bling in a coil, we have, we're making these limited edition, um, larger golden fire coils, the large golden fires. Um, you can see the difference in size there. So these guys will have listed on the website soon. And as they sell out, we'll just make more and put on the website, but we're not going to keep them readily in stock. Um, these guys are heavy duty, no more potent and powerful than these guys are. Um, and a lot of people, you know, have the, the thing with numerology and everything where, you know, it has either the 12 or the 13 um, coils in there, depending on the coil, um, or it has the 12 or 13 twists. The, the number of twists really does not matter, the actual number. We do line everything up on the coils so that there is an even number of twists all the way down. And what we found in the beginning was that the more twists the more potent the coil to a point um you know so much of the potency of and potency basically what we feel energetically they're all going to be the same but the potency how we feel it and perceive it on the physical um you know this guy here with just this small number one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven it has eleven twists um it's just as potent as this one um so let's see the coils. Um, and if you guys have some questions, please do chime in because I believe this is going to be a pretty short webinar. Um, some of the other uses for coils, a lot of people have used the coils for pendulums, um, especially the smaller coil. 
you can use it as a pendulum. A lot of people that I've known have used it for, you know, pendulum healing work that they do. Um, so again, with the tools, we can certainly share these with other people um, because they never need cleaned or cleared. These, these tools are self-clearing. Um, a question, what's the difference between this and the fairy wand? So the wands, um, the wands are not necessarily creating that tube torus. The wands are more of a rugged twist. Um, like the dragon wand was first born out of creating a, a larger harmony coil that I messed up on. And so I just twisted it really tight. And then I was like, wow, that's almost kind of a neat wand. And so that was the, the first ideas of creating that style of wands, the dragon wands, the shaman wands, and the fairy wands, as the question was asked about um, the difference between the coils and the fairy wands. Even though they do look similar because it has a center spire, spiral spire and then the twists all around it, um, they just move energy differently. Um, so some of the other uses of the, the coils, um, and of course, when you wear the coil near that heart, um, anywhere near the heart field, that electromagnetic field, it's a lot more potent than if you just carry this in your purse or your handbag or hang it on your rear view mirror. Um, there's still a lot of people who will do that and that's still fantastic. They're creating that field, like I say, about 20 feet across. But when we actually wear it and it connects in with the heart and the energetics of the heart, our light, then that's where it becomes so much more powerful. Um, one of the things about the wearing the coil pendants is that they are also very grounding and very connecting. Kind of like what we do with um, in the very beginning of this webinar where we did our breathing in of both earth and sky of bringing in that light, connecting the light from above, from below, and just bring that into the heart. It's very similar to what the coils are doing is that it is because it's that dual Taurus. It is bringing in our light both directions. Um, so do I understand correctly that these can be used etherically? Um, so I'm not sure if I understand the question that Grace is asking there about being used etherically. Um, they can be used for, you know, dowsing. Um, basically, people will hold this up above a body who's laying there, and people can hold it up above there to do the clearing work, to do the balancing work, um, to ask the questions, to find out if something is off kilter or not, um, just like you would with a pendulum. Um, so another thought I'm wondering, Grace, when you ask the question, can it be used etherically? So basically seeing that this Taurus is here and you can, with your intentions and being in the heart space, move this toroidal field to another location and utilize it, which you can certainly do that with any of the tools is that um, you can you can use their fields and you can transpose those fields energetically through time and through space. Um, so, so uh, Grace um, also talked there about if she could visualize that field to help. Yes, when you're visualizing this field to assist with, with anything, kind of like we were just, like I was just talking there, how you can visualize that toroidal field, that torus, and you can use that torus around your body, around your home, around situations. Um, yep, you can totally do that. And then let's see, you had a question, just like entities is effective on demons too. Um, you know, we see demons simply as a different form of entity. And, and we always refer to entity. Um, of course, there's the jargon there. But when we say entity, we usually mean a disincarnate being who is not operating in our highest and best good as we perceive it. Um, and so as far as like with ghosts, waywards, because this is the golden fire, it will um, protect from the ghost waywards because as a ghost wayward comes into your field, 
they receive that activation. They receive that the energy of the sacred heart of the golden fire. And so that in most cases will activate their sacred heart to where their soul comes in and takes them. Uh, as far as entities and, and demons, which I would consider a demon just as, you know, a style of entity, because there's a lot of different beings out there and they all can present in pretty wild ways. So does this work with them? This works in a way that we've seen this a lot to where it's raising the frequency and vibration of the person that is wearing the coil. And when they do and they raise their frequency and vibration, if they have an entity attachment within, most of the times those entities cannot stand that raise, that, that raise in frequency and vibration. And so then they are ready to be released. Then they surface. Sometimes they'll release on their own because if you have an entity within, it's usually a soul contract. It's, it's the contract that you carry. And so those contracts need to be cleared, which can be done with just simple consciousness work. It can be done with, if, the, if they are ready to go, you can just visualize the Taurus, the golden fire. You can visualize their heart because they are a spark of divinity, their heart, their soul and igniting that with the golden fire. Um, there's many ways to, to work with these disincarnate beings that, um, you know, that we consider as entities or demons, but um, the coil will certainly make them surface if nothing else. Um, and a lot of times it can help them release. Um, let's see, would this tool be helpful for a mom that has an autistic child? So, the the tool would be helpful one for the autistic child because it does create uh, a really phenomenal field it, it envelops you and so for them if they have any kind of a of a sensory um you know a too much sensory this can certainly help and it can help the mom too um, because it's going to bring her more into the heart more grounded more connected and more at ease um so, yeah, pretty phenomenal tool the Golden Fire Coils are. Um, right now, as of today, on the 19th of September, I believe we still have a few of the larger standard coils that are on sale. Um, the Golden Fire Mini Coil will always have around. The larger Golden Fire Coil, the limited edition, this actually has the illuminated heart, which is the regeneration ring on the infinity. So this is going to be a pretty fun one too, for, for some people who like the bigger bling. So anyway, um, yeah, if we don't have any more questions, that just might be all for the webinar today. So we'll see you guys all next time. Oh, one more quick question, you guys. If I want to keep my empathy when doing healing, then I should not wear this. No, you will still be empathetic. You will still have the ability to receive the information, but it is going to be your soul that is going to be the one that is filtering what is not in your highest and greatest good to receive. So again, the question was if I should keep this on when doing healing work to still be able to receive that energy and information from people to have the empathy totally wear it when you're working with other people because also when you are in the field of another person when you're wearing this it's going to be affecting them as well so awesome thank you guys take care and we will see you next time